Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we are looking at the MSI Z77A-GD65 motherboard. This is a brand new motherboard that features the new Z77 chipset for Intel's Ivy Bridge CPUs. This is how the box looks like. Once again it's the MSI Z77A-GD65 motherboard with the new Z77 chipset from Intel which will support the third generation of Intel Core i3, i5 and i7 processors. Full PCI Express Gen 3 support is featured and Nvidia SLI and AMD Crossfire X is supported as well. Not to forget the new universal GPU virtualization called Lucid Vir2 MVP. As you can see it's a military class 3 board which means top quality and stability according to MSI. One second overclocking is also featured with the OC Genie 2 features and MSI's Click Bias 2 UEFI Bias. On the back of the box you get more details on how different features should make your experience a lot better. For my taste the box is designed very well. Inside the box you get an overclocking guide from MSI showing you the basics. Next you get the quick installation guide, drivers and utilities and this is a certificate of quality and stability which is very nice. Then you also get the software and application user guide and of course the manual for this board. You get 4 SATA 6 gigabit per second cables and here's the nice black and grey IO shield. Of course you also get a black SLI bridge. In here are two headers, one for the front panel connections and the other one for USB. And lastly black voltage cables. Underneath is the motherboard in an anti-static bag. Here's the motherboard with lots of stickers on it, I'll go ahead and remove them quickly. And now I'll show you the entire motherboard from different angles. What I noticed right off the bat is that this board is built up like a premium motherboard, which is very nice for the actual price. The color scheme together with that muscular heatsink look fantastic, and really everything matches with the color scheme. MSI definitely didn't mess that up in any way and the PCB itself is made very well too since it doesn't get bent very easy. All around the motherboard the latest and greatest components are used to achieve maximum stability and overclocking potential. So just from the looks this board is fantastic, it couldn't be done any better. So now let's start with the socket. It's an LGA 1155 socket that supports both Ivy Bridge and previous generation Sandy Bridge CPUs. For the memory there are 4 DDR3 DIMMs that support the dual channel technology. The maximum amount of memory you can install are 32GB. Supported frequencies go all the way up from 1066MHz to 2667MHz at OC which is really really high. Of course the Intel Extreme Memory Profile technology also known as XMP is supported as well. Now to the SATA ports. The first two white ones are SATA 6 gigabit per second that run off the Intel Z77 chipset. The second two white ports are SATA 6 gigabit per second ports as well, but these run off the third party chip called S-Media ASM1061. And lastly the four black ones are SATA 3 gigabit per second ports and these run off the Z77 chipset. Right beside the SATA ports is a front panel USB 3.0 connector. Now to the expansion slots. The first blue one is a PCI Express 3.0 x16 slot. The second and the third blue ones are PCIe 3.0 x16 slots as well. If you'd like to run the multi GPU configuration use the first two PCIe slots in order to get the best performance. Also you'll get 4 PCIe 2.0 x1 slots but no more standard PCI slots. Now to the headers. There are three USB 2.0 headers. Here's one IEEE 1394A header, then a split front panel header, here's the voice genie and the TPM module header and lastly the front panel HD audio header. Now I'll show you the fan headers and their locations. Up here is the CPU fan header, the system fan 1 header is beside the power connector, the system fan 2 header is beside the heatsink, the system fan 3 header is above the memory dims. And lastly the system fan 4 header is down there beside the other headers. The 24 pin power connector is right here in its ideal location as well as the ATX 12 volt 8 pin power connector right there. This board uses a 12 phase VRM to power up the CPU and super ferra chokes are used so that's very good quality. And to keep everything cool large heat sinks are used. These two are even connected with a heat pipe. The chipset is cooled by this heat sink. So nothing should get hot here on this board. Of course you get the debug LED just like on a top of the line premium motherboard which is very nice to see. Also this board features multi bias, this means it has two bias chips. You can switch between these two with that switch right there. So that's very useful. 
Not to forget there are three buttons on board, power, reset and the OC Genie button, which will overclock your CPU in a matter of seconds. Of course you could set up the exact frequency and voltage in the BIOS for this particular button. When we move down a little further we see the voltage checkpoints connector, that's very useful. This board uses the Realtek ALC898 lossless HD audio codec, which sounds very nice, especially the playback. Now to the back panel. There's one PS2 combo port, two USB 2.0 ports, one coaxial SPDF out and one optical SPDF out. Here's the clear CMOS button. Then there are two more USB 2.0 ports and one HDMI port, one gigabit LAN port and two USB 3.0 ports. Then there's one VGA and one DVI port. And lastly, the 8-channel audio that is powered by the Realtek ALC898 audio codec. Now I'd like to show you if high-profile memory could interfere with large aftermarket CPU coolers. In my case I didn't encounter any problems. The memory is touching the cooler, but it's seated in the slot perfectly straight. So in my case with the Cooler Master V6 GT CPU cooler I had no problems at all. Of course it's depending on the memory and on the CPU cooler as well, but I just wanted to give you a basic idea. Now when I power on the machine you'll see 8 blue LEDs near the memory dims. Even near the PCI Express slots you will find one blue LED blinking on activity. And this is how the debug LED would look like in a dark case. Now this is the posting process of the motherboard. It's fast and the post image is very clear. Now I'll quickly enter the bias to show you how it looks like. As you can see, like mentioned before, it's an UEFI BIOS, you can navigate with the mouse and keyboard. On top it will display the CPU and motherboard temperature. On the right it will display the time and date and even the system information. You could also simply drag the boot devices around until they are in the right order. Right now I am under standard mode, you could choose from Eco mode and OCG 2 mode as well. Setting things up in this BIOS is very easy, if you have trouble just click help above. The response is very fast and it doesn't hang. If you decide to flash the BIOS I'd recommend using the M flash utility directly in the BIOS. If you have problems understanding English you can simply change the language since this is an UEFI BIOS. Just in case you don't like entering the BIOS in post you could also enter it in your operating system with click BIOS 2. Basically you get the same options as in the other one, but I personally still prefer using the non-OS version. The MSI Z77A-GD65 is truly one of the very best motherboards for the price that I've ever tested. It performs great, is very stable, looks great, stays very cool, offers great features and doesn't have any problems at all. It has so many features like most of the top of the line premium motherboards have. For the price it's a great beautiful motherboard with overclocking potential. Pros are amazing price performance ratio, the great layout, then it has tons of features like the multi bias feature, onboard buttons and the debug LED. It's also very durable and has a great UEFI bias. It also has a beautiful color scheme and it supports high frequency memory of 2667 MHz. For the cons I have nothing to say, just that there's no PCI slot anymore if it's required, but that's not really a con. Anyways I give this motherboard a 10 out of 10 and definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.